we have this Flask web application. We just run this Flask application. It will should become clearer. Right, so that's the Flask application. Right, so the the current bot, so we're making a machine learning, whatever AI that will play this game. It's essentially doing it over here. Um, so before, yeah, we removed all this uh, normalized uh, positive and uh, negative peaks. Well, we don't actually need them. We have this uh, explanation at the bottom of the HTML as well. I'll start sharing a code of a Flask application we are making. It's already running, but we we need to keep uh, improving it. So that's the HTML. Here's some feedback. Og tags. You've got two og image tags. The local path. Slash bar and chaos. Okay, okay, okay. Don't don't worry about the og paths and things like that. Focus on the technical side of things of what's uh, actually being displayed. I'll be sharing some JavaScript and Python code uh, next, and then we can, you can tell me what you think later. Your script is all about creating ECG waveforms, normal and abnormal. You've got the math nailed down with Gaussian functions and sine waves. This kind of self-documenting code is a lifesaver for maintenance and collaboration. Okay, okay, didn't I say keep it short? Uh, here's the game logic uh, JavaScript. Then there will be the Flask uh, application Python uh, backend uh, script. And then I'll tell you what the problem is. All right. Diving into game underscore logic. JS. Canvas setup. You've set up the canvas well, defining height, width, and colors. Good choice of constants for easy tweaks later. Scoring system. The scoring logic with hits, false alarms, correct rejections, and misses is engaging. It encourages accuracy, not just okay, random. Okay, okay. No. Emojis, keep it short. Here is the Python script of the back end flask. It's really your flask back end is well structured. Global variables. You're using global variables to track min, max values for normalization. Okay, okay, okay. Performance testing, okay, fuzzy logic. Okay, couple of things. And then uh, let me know if you prefer generating the code yourself or uh, generating prompts for github copilot to do it so the current problem is that the raw frequency is always zero therefore the normalized frequency is not showing anything at all where are we calculating f50 currently understand what github is complaining about it should uh, have access to the code is finding the dominant frequency it's taking the absolute value so if it's always zero it means the maximum value is always at the first index yeah this is the four or five is ecg waveforms that we have and yeah, let's print the frequency and the dominant frequency okay i, I place the image uh, shared the image of the the graph of the different uh, ECG waveforms just overlaid one on top of the other. I think we have four. This should be in the waveform JavaScript file. Keep responses short. Do not use any emojis. Check for DC offset. A DC offset in your signal could influence the FFT output. Try applying a high pass filter to remove any DC offset before performing the FFT. Inspect the scaling. The frequency value from the FFT needs to be scaled correctly to represent real frequency units, HZ. A really good point. Plot FFT. It okay, might okay, 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 okay. Yeah, for whatever reason, we have all the values sitting at uh, 300. I mean, we could just do minus 300. Don't know why it's like that to begin with. But yes, you essentially can subtract the uh, 300 from all the NP data values. Keep responses short. It's minus zero. Let's bring the plot back. It's the frequency response. Seems like I only need the one uh, side of it. What do you think? Let's 
becoming quite uh, heavy. I get my CPU uh, struggling a bit. I have a dominant frequency of three. Is it being shown? Yeah, that number three makes sense, doesn't it? Get rid of the GUI. Don't need much block leap. Raw frequency does make sense, but uh, yeah, we probably don't need any normalization for it. Okay, now the raw frequency meant to be called the dominant frequency. It actually has a value of 5 here. To make sure it's actually displaying correctly. It's not running now, so why does it keep scrolling stuff? Yeah, we have to get rid of that normalization. It's weird that it's always uh, a value of 3. Uh, this is our... Uh, output in the flask uh, terminal can you check based on the code provided what the sampling rate is uh, remember this is synthetic also it is interesting that the dominant frequency went from three to five in this particular case the abnormality output remained the same i don't think we need to normalize the frequency considering this is the dominant frequency oh no we might need to normalize it because is the assumption is there an assumption that all the membership functions deal with values between zero and one well the whole idea for the backend to be agnostic to what the waveforms are are you suggesting we should be dropping frequency measurement from this analysis? If so, would you recommend replacing it by another feature? Okay, so how do we change to relative frequency? Do we still need to normalize relative frequency or just uh, use it in the fuzzy logic as is? Right, so the relative frequency is between 0 to 0.5 and the membership functions are designed to handle 0 to 1 so we can just uh, multiply by 2 and use a scale scaled relative frequency dominant frequency should only be used once over here we should be using scaled relative frequency the relative frequency yes so we have dominant frequency used once relative frequency used once and scaled relative frequency is the one we actually using so we're using scaled relative frequency and normalized i expect them to be the same this doesn't really work as expected. It's always zero. Let's print dominant frequency separately. Hey, okay, there's a problem. I want to print length. So length of data is 800 data points. It's probably too many, but okay. Yeah, 5 divided by 800, we get this small number there. This is not good. Any suggestions? It looks like you've successfully calculated the relative frequency and scaled it up to match the expected range for your fuzzy logic system. With this scaled relative frequency, you should update your processed underscore data dictionary to include these new values. Now, this scaled underscore relative underscore frequency is ready to be fed into your fuzzy logic system as an input variable, fitting into the membership functions properly designed for the 0 to 1 range. Keep in mind that if the dominant underscore frequency is showing as 5 and the length of data is 800, a relative frequency of 0 0.00625, 5 8 hundredths, is correct, and the scale value of 0 0.0125, 0 0.00652, would be the appropriate input for the fuzzy system. Uh, yes, but... I'm pretty sure these values will remain super low. They would not be getting up to 1 because 5 seems to be the highest dominant frequency we get. And the 
relative frequency is way too small. I would think not to use uh, the division by the length of the data. Maybe we can use something else instead. So the scaled relative frequency actually dynamically changes between 0 and 1. Understood. If 5 is the highest dominant frequency you're getting and you want the scaled relative frequency to span the full range from 0 to 1 dynamically, you can normalize it based on the maximum observed frequency so far. This way, the relative frequency can adapt to the range of frequencies you actually encounter in your data. Here's how you can adjust your code for dynamic scaling. Keep track of the highest dominant frequency seen so far. Let's call it max underscore dominant underscore frequency. Each time you calculate a new dominant frequency, update max underscore dominant underscore frequency if the new value is higher. Normalize the dominant frequency against max underscore dominant underscore frequency to get a value between 0 and 1. Python. Copy code hash update max underscore dominant underscore frequency if the new dominant frequency is higher if dominant underscore frequency greater than max underscore dominant underscore okay, frequency. Okay, okay, okay. I don't know why it's reading the, the code as well. Hash normalize the dominant frequency against the maximum observed so far scaled underscore relative underscore frequency equals dominant underscore frequency max underscore dominant underscore. Okay, maybe stop reading altogether. Yeah, it's really hard to talk to this bot properly, especially when it's uh, giving longer responses with uh, sections and stuff in them. Right, so instead of that, we're monitoring the maximum dominant frequency. And if it's uh, higher than the current one, then we will be saving it. Dominant frequency scaled. Okay, hey, wait a sec. Getting confused. Start getting rid of stuff. Here yeah, we have a dominant frequency. Then we're saving the maximum dominant frequency and the scale is scaling. Wouldn't the name of this should be scale dominant frequency instead of scaled relative frequency? You'd think we don't need the relative frequency anymore. Quick response. Yes, in this context, since you're scaling the dominant frequency based on the maximum observed frequency to date, a more accurate term would be scaled dominance frequency. You can drop the relative frequency term if it's no longer providing additional context or value to your analysis. Here's the updated code snippet reflecting this change. Now, scaled underscore dominance underscore frequency is what you would use for your fuzzy logic analysis, which will be between 0 and 1, dynamically adjusted based on the data you receive. Right, so we're updating max dominant frequencies if the new dominant frequency is higher. In a one liner instead of two lines, we don't need the two lines. And then we have, and we're normalizing, yes, and we call it the dominance, the scale dominant. What? It's making mistakes with the name. Should be scale dominant frequency. Now in the process data, it's not called process data, it's called something else. This is the code I have so far with the bits I modified myself. Can you fix it or provide prompts for GitHub Copilot to do it? To fix the code with your modifications for the scale dominant frequency, you'll need to make a few changes. Initialize max underscore dominant underscore frequency. Add a global variable to keep track of the maximum dominant frequency observed. Modify process data, update the processed underscore data dictionary to include the scaled key instead of normalized under the frequency field. Update global ranges function. Since you're no longer using normalized frequency, you need to remove or modify the code that updates global ranges for frequencies. Fuzzy logic input. Ensure that the fuzzy logic analysis function uses the scaled dominant frequency correctly. Here are the code modifications. These changes should align your code with the new approach of using a scaled dominant frequency. Yeah, why is this not a link? Yeah, no, that's wrong. Global marks. So we don't no longer using normalized frequency. Fuzzy logic input. Ensure that the fuzzy logic analysis function uses the scaled dominant frequency correctly. I can't deal with the whole code. There's too much code for it. Yeah, 330 lines. Multi analysis. Frequency. Is scaled. We do, uh, so we don't need to normalize the frequency. Yeah, we're getting an error. Uh, ba, 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 ba. And this is the kind of stuff GitHub Copilot can deal with. 
we don't need ChatGPT 4 for it. Okay, this should be better. How to solve this error? Keep it short. The error is because global underscore max underscore dominant underscore frequency is not being recognized as a global variable inside your function. Okay, let's clear that. Don't have the analysis result. So this thing should be playing the ECG detection game instead of a human. Um, and the analysis results are missing. We're still using normalized stuff, but we actually decided not to normalize the features extracted from the signal. This meant we a machine learning playing this game. It's been kind of working. We were trying to tune uh, parameters. So we're using a fuzzy logic. I don't know if you're familiar with fuzzy logic, but you will after I will. After we finish with this tool. But currently we have this pesky errors coming in. Something with the variables being with the global variables being defined in wrong places github copilot is kind of hopeless at uh, solving errors gpt4 is better okay, can you provide a prompt for github copilot to make sure the global max dominant frequency global variable is assigned correctly yeah, we have a global variable script we need to update this variable within the function called process data so we have process data finding a global variable before the function uh, it's to do with the normalization so for the what are they called in fuzzy logic the things to work you need the thresholds correct so we need to normalize all the parameters between zero and one that's what we are struggling with a uh, clear this run the flask application still running it locally yeah this normalization is better so the dominant frequency in this uh, waveform is three or five or whatever and then it's it's taking five as the maximum so uh, because five is the highest number we had so far so the normalization will return one and if it's free, it, it will return 0. 0.6. So that makes sense. However, we have another error. The error message indicates a problem with accessing a normalized key, likely in a dictionary, within the analyze underscore waveform function. This might be because the key does not exist in the dictionary you're trying to access. So this is the actual uh, fuzzy logic uh, algorithm. This is all the rules uh, for it. Yeah, this should be a good example of the difference between uh, GitHub Copilot and uh, GPT-4. See, so GP, uh, the error sorry. normalized is likely due to the fact that the frequency data structure in the processed underscore data dictionary no longer contains a key called normalized. Okay, maybe I was wrong. Um, Copilot is able to seem to be able to deal with it as well sometimes it's putting these links uh, in the chat which is really helpful because they go to the to where you need to make the change yeah like this one should be a link which it sometimes is so it's just weird try to access normalized yeah we don't want to access yeah, so amplitude stays normalized because we are normalizing amplitude. Uh, okay, pop it in there. Alt value, what? <laughs> okay, replace the default value with the value that makes sense in your context. This is where we shut down GitHub Copilot. Right, let's see if this one is any better. I expect it to be better. So we have the, yes, we have the fuzzy logic analysis. We have the abnormality analysis frequency. Get rid of what the GitHub Copilot told us to do. So scale this the same. Okay. Then we have somewhere normalized frequency membership. 
Yeah, this bit. Okay, this should be scaled. Oops, I've kept the it's all case sensitive, isn't it? Scale frequency data. Yeah, that's a membership function. So essentially we're saying that the frequency membership is low. If the frequency is low, then we're using the scaled frequency. Okay. Same. And we returning frequency membership. Frequency membership. Okay. Right there. Application is not actually running. By the way, go check out bodykills.com if you haven't done it already. My CPM for today is very high. This is your chance of supporting the project. Yeah, so th this is the ACG game that we trying to modify. That's the one that humans can play. So if you go on the site, you can play that game. There's a video. Yes, there are ads. Sorry for that. Yes, there will be a video somewhere of me getting to about 1,000 points. You can see if we can beat that. It does become uh, faster every 50 points or so. So go check it out. Now we're doing this fuzzy logic business, but we're essentially combining this two. And later, if this works well, we'll be also adding neural nets to it to make it even better. And uh, so you can compare different algorithms. It's clear. It's gone. So run it again. Still getting some error. Okay. This might be a longer debugging. ChatGPT also stuff something up, or every time we use frequency, we should not have the normalized bit anymore. Yeah, like over here. That, yeah, that there went away. So yes, we don't need this line. And we have, oops, keep pressing Control C instead of Control. Shift C. Pretty annoying. A frequency. We have a scaled frequency. It's like the. It's being stored somewhere. No, not here. At yeah, this one. Yeah, we have frequency roll and scale, so that should be fine. That should be fine. Yeah, probably will hit the. The limit of uh, GPT-4 has this, uh, what's it, 40 messages per three hours currently. Document probably hit this limit. Still getting the same error. It's something this name. Okay, I have the, I checked the code. It is, uh, the script is exactly as you are suggesting. Do I also need to update the game logic? JavaScript, quick responses, please. Yeah, it's always tempting to go uh, use uh, GitHub Copilot. Should I use uh, GitHub Copilot for this? Or are you gonna generate, change the update, the code? Do we need the game logic JavaScript again? Let's clear the chat. We need to do it with a workspace function so it can find a second. So we probably need to select the Python script. Then we go update the flask back and yeah, so I'm not sure which which way is it, but in theory when you select workspace it should find uh, the script it needs. Maybe maybe not. This will be JavaScript, right? No. Batch. My Flask endpoint. Shouldn't you know what the endpoint is? Batch. Okay, GitHub Copilot doesn't seem to be able to make the necessary changes. Maybe I'm not using it correctly. Here is my JavaScript. Can you suggest updates? No, I'm still getting uh, the error above. Can you double check the code? Looking at the process data output, 
it seems processed underscore data has raw key and a frequency, but not a scale key. Yeah, the code seem okay, but I'm still getting the same error. Here is the whole Python script again. Yeah, I'll be really hitting that uh, limit. <laughs> we are going in circles here. Can you look at the entire code, the updated code that I shared with you? And try a different approach for resolving the this error. In the analyze underscore waveform function, where fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis is called, ensure the processed underscore data contains the scaled key and the frequency. So we're printing it out. Process data, no. It does not have it. A process data seem to only have the raw frequency. It keeps changing, alternating between those two lines. Obviously, the second one is uh, better, should be faster. Yeah, frequency, raw, and scale. Okay. I'm returning JSON file. Can you regenerate the whole function? Yeah, we'll do this. Continue next time. I'll see you later. Put your questions, uh, comments. Let's regenerate the analyze underscore waveform function in your Flask application. This function is responsible for handling the post request to the analyze underscore waveform endpoint, processing the waveform data received, analyzing it using fuzzy logic, and then sending back the analysis results. Here's the regenerated analyze underscore waveform function. In this function, the waveform data is extracted from the post request. The data is processed using the process underscore data function, which should calculate and return metrics like raw frequency, scaled frequency, peaks, and amplitude. A check is added to ensure that the scaled frequency data is present. The fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function is called to perform the analysis on the process data. Results of the analysis, along with the process data, are structured into a response dictionary. This response is sent back to the client in JSON format. Ensure that the process underscore data and fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis functions are correctly implemented and handle the data as expected for this analyze underscore waveform function to work correctly. 